Greetings. My name is Thomas Fetterman. I'm going to talk a bit about crutches. My thought here is to be able to teach people how to make this Sister Kenny crutch, which is basically a, a bow crutch. We call these bows. And a spinning or fixed leather top that your arm goes through and grabs onto the handle. This configuration that I'm going to show how to make is made so it's quite adjustable. This could fit a person because of these adjustment holes, both here and here. They could fit a person from as low as around five feet up to a little bit over six feet. When you fall with a kinney crutch with a leather thing, leather band on top, you can get your hands out and break the fall without getting all tied up in, a, in an arm cuff. The advantage of this method that I'm showing you now is that it can be manufactured. So a, a small group of, of, of people, uh, possibly w working with disabilities, can be taught this relatively simple uh, method of building a crutch. Making it like this, you can make them in batches and I think make them quite inexpensively and set up a nice little uh, a little business for somebody making these crutches. I uh, hope uh, this uh, video you'll find is instructive and uh, thanks for your time. I'm going to give you a uh, little demonstration on how to fit yourself with a Kenny crutch. The first thing you need to do is capture your Y measurement. The Y measurement is from the top surface of the hand grip of the crutch to the bottom of the crutch tip. This is the distance from this crease in your hand when your arm is relaxed by your side to the ground. Standing straight, allow your hands to droop to the side, relax, and grab the dowel with your hand and then lift it up. You take a marker, you mark the spot. Then, take a tape measure and measure 33 inches is the measurement to that line that we just made. So 33 inches is your Y measurement. Next measurement you want to take is the X measure from the point of your elbow to that same mark on your wrist. So you take the tape and you put it at your elbow and you mark and you get 10 inches I have here. Now we take that measurement to the, up to the top of the elbow and we get 10 inches and that's the distance from here to here. The idea is you want it up as high as you can on your forearm to give you the most mechanical advantage. If you get it up too high and it starts to bind into your bicep, then you know it's measuring too high and you want to shorten it up a little bit. So there we are. Kenny crutches, how to measure. The two bows of the crutches are what we're going to make next. The bows are the two pieces that run on the outside of the crutch as versus the leg, which is the centerpiece that you put the crutch tip on. So we take our stock, we cut it down to be uh, one and a half inches by an inch or thereabouts. Now we want to take this one piece while it's together like this and drill our through holes. This way when we drill one hole through both pieces they're going to line up exactly. I make this template to make uh, manufacturing quicker and easier and more accurate. So you make one piece, you never use this piece on anything else but to measure. Now what I did was I took our template piece which is laid out here with a hole two and a quarter inches from the bottom and then marked it again at another five inches up from here to here and then from here to the first handle hole we have 17 and a quarter inches and then we have every one and a quarter inch from here, here, here and here. This allows room for the handle to adjust. These two holes go through the leg piece and back into the other bow piece. And then the crutch will actually be cut off at this point up at the top, so that's your entire length of the bow of the crutch, 
minus the leg. And we measure down for the arm cuff, the pivot, the pivot pin goes through here, and this is one and a quarter inches from there. So you lay it down on top of your piece of wood, you square it up here on the end, make sure it's good and square, your butt end is, is tight to the bottom, your edges are even to the side, you put your center punch through and you tap it before making hole number one. Recheck your alignment, put it in, tap it. We put this aside to be used for the next crutch and you can see we have all the drill marks. So now we're going to take it over to the drill press. We're going to line this up on our jig over there and we're going to carefully drill perpendicular holes to these punch marks. Okay, now we're going to drill the holes we just marked that are going to represent all the places we attach the crutch and our adjustment holes. So the next thing we do is we get it lined up with the drill press off. So you can kind of pilot that little hole to make sure you're right there in the middle where you want to be. We're all set to go. We turn on the power. Okay, hole number one. Turn it around. We've got the two bottom holes that are going to lock the leg piece in place. You want to be particularly accurate with these because they've got to go through the leg piece and they all want to line up perfectly. All right, here we go. All the holes drill through. Now we're ready to move on to the ripping stage where we're going to rip this board down the middle to make the two separate bow pieces. All right, here we go. Now this is the leg piece where the crutch ship's going to go down here. We have it uh, drilled through and through so we have nice accurate holes going through. Now we're going to rip it down the middle to make two leg pieces, one of which we'll use as a template to make further leg pieces. So we've got the fence set up to do that here. We use our push guide, lay it up slowly against the fence. Now we're going to rip the bows down, the two side pieces of the right one. Now we have the two bows of the crutch. These two effectively will be put together like so. Crutch tip down here and we're all set now to move on to the next step. So now we have the three pieces, the bows and the middle piece, the leg piece. We're going to give them a quick sand to knock off the edges, keep them splintering. Uh, this probably won't be the finished sanding but it's a good way to start. Uh, we're going to take an 80 grit sandpaper and uh, wrap it around and knock those edges off. And the finish sand, this is an 80 grit, as I said, the finish sand you can use a, a finer grit. This works for moving right along fast here. Now this, this piece here, the leg piece, we're also going to hit it on the sander, taper this down to a bit of a pencil point so that we can slide the crutch tip on top. And we'll knock off these square corners up at the top just so it doesn't bump into people and hurt them. Okay, now we're going to uh, knock the corners off this taper a little bit so that we can fit the crutch tip on it. And then I'm going to just knock the corners off of this so it doesn't get anybody's way. So here we are, this is going to be drilling the holes in the handles for the hand grips. Take them in with a square, mark the center line so that you know exactly where the center is. We take the X in the middle, we're going to put that little marked corner in the corner here. We're going to hold it in place. This will be uh, carved 
down to be a circle, make it a cylinder, uh, over which we're going to slip the hand grip. Now we're going to shape the hand grip piece. It's, uh, as you can see, of course, square stock. We're going to knock off the corners so that we can fit the PVC vinyl hand grip over top. Here we go. So here we are in the soaking stage. We've taken the dry wood and now we've put it in this container of water to soak. This has been in here for about three days. Uh, the length of time in the water soaking depends on the hardness of the wood. The idea is the wood wants to be saturated so that it'll be pliable when you bend it without cracking, fracturing the wood. So now we're going to take the top off. Yep, here they come. We're on our way. So now we're getting into the assembly stage and we need to cut the all thread. This is all thread. It's one long threaded piece of steel. And we're going to cut it so that we can put our bolt through here, here, and also the handle. So I have it locked into the vise. I measured the first piece at two and three quarter inches. All right. Okay, here we come to the assembly part. We take the two bows that we have now soaked for three days. The idea is to be able to bend them without breaking the wood. Uh, the leg piece is not soaked, no need to do that. That stays straight all along. So we take the uh, first piece of all thread, we tap it through our bottom piece. We uh, lay it into a, a, a hole. Now, we put the first one through and line this up with the first hole from the bottom of this. We take a block washer and another nut and we stick it on here. pliers. Okay, number one, and then we're going to take the second bolt, line that up, there it is out the other side. I made this thread a little longer to accommodate the ability to crank it in slowly without splitting the thing radically. So we take the handle, we want to put it in the bottom adjustment hole. Uh, so you open it up carefully because we're talking about a tight fit here. Alright, now we take our handle bolt, never going home. The ultimate goal is to be able to make these two pieces parallel by bringing these, this together. We left this area run long to give us some bending purchase. I'll take a piece of twine, tie it on the end, and then use the twine to hold it down and wrap. Keep that in place. Alright, so that end is good. We got this flexation here. Now we're going to swing it around and tighten up these nuts here. There we go. Now you can see that this is tight all the way across here. It springs out like it should here. When this now dries, we put it out in the sun, like I said, for maybe three or four days, tied up like this. Uh, then when we come back, we're going to cut these off right here or right here. You can see this pencil mark. That's the, that's the area we're going to cut them off and round those edges. And it's at the top here that we're going to mount our leather cuff that goes in between these points and pivots. I'm now going to talk about how to make the arm cuff for the Kenny armband crutch. Here I have a template for one of the crutches that is 15 inches long and three and a half inches wide. I lay it down and then we lay it along the straight edge there like so. 
and then I can mark the corners like so just a light tap just to let you know and then I'm going to mark here the hole for the hinge pin uh, this is the corresponding hole we're back down here to the end of this cuff which is right here and right here and then the center pin hole again okay the uh, cutting of the cuff we've laid it out with the template lined the corners up with a ruler and cut around them so we now have a piece that's the right measurement for our arm cuff all right now we have the piece cut out we take our punch and punch out the holes that's the pivot hole there's another pivot hole in the middle where the cuff leather overlaps and then there's the final pivot hole here now we're going to punch the rivet holes one there for the top rivet all right now the idea is to overlap them like so so on the inside we want to add some rubber cement the back side of the leather makes the other side of complete you line up the holes and you give it a squeeze and there you have a temporary fit now once you have that done you want to move on to the riveting stage take a rivet stick it through the hole cap the rivet on top the way we do it now is we take the rivet set up you take the cap pin uh, peener and you give it a whack and it makes a nice tight fit now you can see inside and out this is a very strong uh, tie put the first screw through here put a washer on there the washer is important because it allows the cuff to spin around on its axis take a nut stick it on there put the nut on tighten it up you want to make it too tight what I try and do is just get it so that the screw comes through the nut because we're going to peen that over now so it makes it more difficult for it to back out okay now we bring the old anvil back into play slide this on like so find metal on metal then take the round end of the peen hammer and this will assure that they're not going to come off unless you want them to come off do the same the other side you don't want to leave any rough edges now we're installed the cuff is able to turn and it can be easily replaced I'm hoping that you have gotten some valuable instruction from watching this video Perhaps you'll be able to build a pair of these Kenny forearm crutches for yourself. And if you're good at it, maybe you can build other pairs for people around you that don't have the advantage of a good pair of crutches. They're not hard to build. You could build many pairs. You could turn it in possibly to a small business, gaining some employment. I want to leave all of my uh, brothers and sisters who are fellow crutch users like myself. Peace. Thank you very much. I want to thank everyone for generously giving of their time and talent in the making of this video.